Now, uh, I've been in the flat earth movement, community, whatever you want to call it, for longer than it's been in existence. So that must mean that you're a card-carrying member of the Flat Earth Society, which is a group of people that were paid to basically discredit this whole Flat Earth movement because the Earth is actually a stationary plane, which I have proven umpteen different ways. Just because you don't understand the proofs doesn't mean that they aren't proofs, uh, Mr. Tiger Dan. This particular wave of the uh, the Flat Earth um, I, I was looking and investigating the Flat Earth long before it started to take off. And uh, you can see my history on my channel. I've posted lots of videos and YouTube videos about the Flat Earth, believing that it was true. And it turns out it's not true. So you posted videos believing something was true, and now you believe it's not true. So basically, this means you're a flip-flopping, wishy-washy, sort of an idiot, I guess you could say, because anyone with a brain and common sense can prove not only is the Earth flat, which is, to me, that's sort of secondary, but the Earth is actually completely stationary, and I haven't seen you talk about that at all. I have not only that, but I've never seen you debunk anything um, logically. You say, oh, the rail lines don't work on a flat Earth, um, but you're forgetting the whole premise. It has to do with architects and engineers uh, never calculating in the curve of the earth when they do canals, bridges, railways, etc. So you don't get it, Tiger. It's a, uh, it's a psyop, and uh, it's a psychological operation. They've played the Flat Earth Illuminati card on us. We've all been conned by it. I have to agree, Tiger Dan, you are a psyop. You know, I can't believe that I actually, you know, referred people to you because some of your proofs were really kind of silly. Um, you really never made much sense, and obviously that's because you didn't understand the proofs. Um, either that or you were just sort of playing dumb, and that was sort of your role with the Flat Earth Society in your psychological operation. Um, the fact of the matter is, the, the Earth is actually flat and stationary. That's, that's very easily proven. Um, the fact that you don't understand things, or the fact that you're not really bright, or the fact that you pretend not to understand things so that a few months into this when it's starting to hit critical mass you can start attacking people and calling them a psyop because you believe something now you don't and so therefore it's a psyop but um, do you have any arguments against uh, you know the earth spinning or the earth flying through space at 66,600 miles an hour um, no, you just say that it's not flat, so it's a psyop, and I don't get it. Brilliant. Very brilliant. And uh, this picture here on the screen is the type of thing that got me bought into the idea of a flat Earth, because on the top there you've got the dog cam with a flat level horizon. Obviously you didn't understand this part either, because it has nothing to do with the flat level horizon. It has to do with the horizon always raising to your eye level no matter high, how, how high an altitude you climb so if you go 20 miles into the air like that dog cam footage the horizon level should be well below your line of sight but instead since it is a plane the horizon level raises with you regardless of altitude so um, your lack of understanding things or your stupidity um, doesn't prove anything really and in the middle you've got Mount Everest with a flat level horizon. On the bottom you've got sea level with a flat horizon across. And uh, when you get exposed to the counter arguments, the counter arguments are so, they've got so much gravitas to them that you can't go back to believing that that's a flat horizon again because uh, I'm going to show you a clip now from somebody who has a really exceptional ability to visualize geometry and uh, the counter arguments just destroy this idea of a, uh, a flat level horizon so he can explain it better than I can I'm gonna play the clip now the reason you think he can explain it better than you is because you don't understand what you're talking about the flat level horizon doesn't prove a flat earth However, when you gain altitude, say, 10 or 20 miles into the air and the horizon is still flat and level, and at eye level, that clearly proves that we don't live on a globe. 
uh, Tiger Dan. The, the fact that you're avoiding the actual proofs, um, I go into tons of things involving gravity, astronomy, visible space during the summer and winter being opposite ends of the universe, um, yet we can still see all the same stars all year r round. Um, you're not going to touch that one because it actually is proof. East to west flight times being identical in duration uh, to west to east flight times proves the Earth is stationary, but you're not going to touch that one either because you can't debunk the truth, um, Tiger Shill. It's totally engaging. This whole, yay, what's, what's going on? And I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at the horizon and it's straight. I go, yeah, there's no curve there. The horizon being flat when you're standing by sea level doesn't prove the flat Earth. Doesn't prove the globe Earth either. It just proves that your line of sight towards the horizon is a finite distance due to the laws of perspective. If you're about six feet tall, the horizon is going to be about three and a half miles away from your point of view. Now, what does prove or what disproves Columbus's notion that when ships go beyond the horizon, they sink below a curve, that is bull. Because if you zoom in on that ship that went below the curve, um, you'll see the ship totally restored from hull all the way up to the top of the mast. So the guy that you're referencing here that you think is so smart actually doesn't get it just like you don't get it. It's sort of a shame. And, you know, I, I sort of liked your stuff at first, and I was a little bit questionable about you, Tiger Dan, from the beginning just because of some of the silly stuff that you brought up. But, you know, I went along with it because I, I sort of like to uh, stick together with people that are of the, you know, of the same movement. Um, the world is obviously flat and stationary. I thought you understood that, but apparently you were just parroting things that you heard because you liked the sound of it, but you didn't understand it. And now you're exposing yourself as a shill, as controlled opposition, and as a probably, a, I guarantee you've got a card for the Flat Earth Society, which is uh, a bunch of people who think it's funny to go around to schools and show children how stupid it is to be a Flat Earther. And uh, yeah, I would categorically place you into that banner. So, man, you sure had me fooled, Tiger Dan. You did a good job with your whole biblical, you know, persona. What do you, do you actually worship the devil or <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute, the Bible doesn't make much sense. It has some contradictions. So are you going to go expose the Bible next? Hmm. Well, the damn horizon is too close. You can't see a curve. If the earth is too big, you're not going to see a curve. Agreed. But what about 20 or 30 miles into the air? Um, what about if you're looking across the ocean? And you can see, you know, within a yard, and Tiger Dan did a good job of uh, explaining this, but uh, from your perspective, if you're looking at the horizon from the top of a cliff, a yard, from your perspective, say three miles away, is going to represent 25 or 50 miles. And so if you were to observe a ship going across that 50-mile stretch, it should uh, go up an incline, incline plane until it meets your vantage point, and then down an incline plane for the rest of the 50 miles. And we don't see that because the Earth actually is flat, whether you understand it or not, Mr. Shilly. And you're too close to the ground. You're not going to see a curve, even at 100 feet up. What about 130,000 feet up? Would you see a curve then, Mr. Santa Claus? 500 feet up. You're not going to see the curve. You're going to see the horizon. And the horizon is going to go around in a circle around you. And it's going to be, it's like a, a circle, like, like this, the top of this cup. And you're going to be so, the circumference is so big, 25,000 miles in circumference. If it's a, if it's a spherical Earth, you're not going to see the curve. You're too low. You're like a flea on a uh, on a steel ball that's a mile in diameter. Is is a flea? You're going to look. Past, you're going to see over the horizon, but it's it's you're too small, and the thing is too big. You're not going to see curvature. Okay, and what if that flea were to travel, say, 500 feet above that mile-tall uh, sphere? Do you think he'd see a curve then? Um, yeah, of course you're not going to see a curve standing on the ground. 
Um, this just sort of shows that you haven't thought this through, that you're just basically falling back into the programming because you think the Earth is a globe. But in fact, if you had a flea that was on a mile in diameter steel ball, if you took that flea up, say, 500 feet, yes, there would definitely be a curve. And not only that, but the flea would have to look lower and lower to see the horizon. But in reality, here in the world, no matter how high up you go in a weather balloon or in a rocket, not thinking about the Apollo astronauts in 1969, but think about Felix Baumgartner that would, did the uh, 130,000 uh, free fall jump above New Mexico. Um, the only reason we saw a curve there is because they used a fisheye lens, but you can actually tell when he pops up in that hatch, the horizon is directly in front of him at eye level, which totally disproves the Earth is a ball. So obviously you haven't done the research, Tiger Dan hasn't done the research, or Tiger Dan was just sort of inserted into this movement to, play, to be sort of an agent provocateur, get people behind it, and then jump ship and start pointing fingers at people, calling them liars and uh, psyop. Wow, man. Wow. You really got a lot of gall, I'll tell you that. And you're too low. You, you're going you're gonna to look around the horizon on a sphere, and you're going to see a circle. It's never, you know, wherever you look, I, I fell for this, you know, oh, yeah, it's flat. I was thinking that was some kind of evidence that the earth is not curved. That's this non, it's going to look, look all the way around. It's going to curve, it, even, even if it's a ball. It's, going, it's not going to curve. I'm going to play a quick clip of Zetetic Astronomy because Tiger Dan, this bearded Santa Claus guy, obviously never read it, but this totally demolishes this whole idea that you guys have that uh, the Earth is a globe, apparently. So uh, since you guys obviously never read Zetetic, this is an important lesson and an, an important proof that the Earth isn't a globe at all. So uh, enjoy this for a minute. The surface of all water is horizontal and that, therefore, the Earth cannot possibly be anything other than a plane. All appearances to the contrary have been shown to be purely optical and adventitious. Another proof that the surface of the water is horizontal and that, therefore, the Earth cannot be a globe is furnished by the following experiment, which was made in May 1864 on the new pier of South Sea near Portsmouth. Section 13, Image 2. A telescope was fixed upon a stand and directed across the water at Spithead to the pierhead at Ride in the Isle of Wight as shown in the subjoined diagram. The line of sight crossed a certain part of the funnel of one of the regular streamers trading between Portsmouth and the Isle of Wight and it was observed to cut or fall upon the same part during the whole of the passage to Ride Pier thus proving that the water between the two piers is horizontal because it was parallel to the line of sight from the telescope fixed at South Sea. If the Earth were a globe, the channel between Ride and South Sea would be an arc of a circle, and, as the distance across is four and a half statute miles, the center of the arc would be 40 inches higher than the two sides, and the steamer would have ascended an inclined plane for two and a quarter miles, or to the center of the channel, and afterwards descended for the same distance towards Ride. This ascent and descent would have been marked by the line of sight falling 40 inches nearer to the deck of the streamer when on the center of the arc of water, as represented in the following diagram. This is section 13, number 3. But as the line of sight did not cut the steamer lower down when in the center of the channel and no such ascent and descent was observed, it follows necessarily that the surface of the water between South Sea and the Isle of Wight is not convex, and therefore the Earth as a whole is not a globe. The evidence against the doctrine of the Earth's rotundity is so clear and perfect, and so completely fulfills the conditions required in special and independent investigations, that it is impossible for any person who can put aside the bias of previous education to avoid the opposite conclusion that the Earth is a plane. This conclusion is greatly confirmed by the experience of mariners in regard to certain lighthouses. Where the light is fixed and very brilliant, it can be seen at a distance, which the present doctrine of the Earth's rotundity would render altogether impossible. 
For the instance, at page 35 of Lighthouses in the World, the Ride Pier Light, erected in 1852, is described as a bright fixed light 21 feet above the high water and visible from an altitude of 10 feet at the distance of 12 nautical or 14 statute miles. The altitude of 10 feet would place the horizon at the distance of 4 statute miles from the observer. The square of the remaining 10 statute miles multiplied by 8 inches will give a fall or curvature downwards from the horizon of 66 feet. Deduct from this 21 feet, the altitude of the light, and we have 45 feet as the amount which the light would ought to be below the horizon. By the same authority, at page 39, the Bidston Hill Lighthouse near Liverpool is 228 feet above high water, one bright fixed light visible 23 nautical or very nearly 27 statute miles, deducting 4 miles for the height of the observer, squaring the remaining 23 miles, and multiplying that product by 8 inches, we have a downward curvature of 352 feet. From this, deduct the altitude of the light to 28 feet, and there remains 124 feet as the distance which the light should be below the horizon. Again, at page 40, quote, the lower light on the calf of man is 282 feet above the high water and is visible 23 nautical miles, end quote. The usual calculation will show that it ought to be 70 feet below the horizon. At page 41, the Cromer light is described as having an altitude of 274 feet above high water and is visible 23 nautical miles, whereas it ought to be, at that distance, 78 feet below the horizon. So, Tiger Dan, I'm really not sure where you're getting your flat earth proofs. It seems like you just heard some things and repeated them. Uh, you saw that the horizon was flat, so you thought the earth was flat, but this isn't about what we can see. This is about what we can scientifically measure, and there isn't any curvature. The earth isn't spinning. It's not orbiting, and so it's not a spinning globe. Um, the fact that you don't understand this after studying it for a year and apparently being a member of the Flat Earth Society for long before then uh, conclusively proves to me that, first of all, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not a good source of information. You're wishy-washy. You just sort of follow the herd on things that you think make sense, even though you don't understand them. And the fact that you are really not that bright doesn't prove anything other than... Well, that you're not that bright. Until you get up high enough. And how high is high enough? You have to do the math. I'm not saying you won't see the, the curvature if you get high enough. If it's round. I'm just saying you get in a tall building and look out this way or that way, you're going to see flat horizon okay so what about 20 or 30 miles into the air uh top of a building i don't think that's 20 miles i don't even think that's even 10 miles not even a mile so you're just basically using your ignorance to prove the earth is a ball wow this is just getting very very strange and it even if it's on a ball so that Anyway, I, I started looking. I was looking for about a week, really getting engaged. And then I started getting frustrated because, you know, finding rock solid evidence was uh, not working. Okay, flatness aside, what about spinning? What about orbiting? What about the fact that you can see the North Star Polaris from as far south as Capricorn, which would be physically impossible on a globe? Um, what about the fact that we can see these same stars uh, overhead from winter to summer from the equator? That proves the heliocentric model is totally wrong. So you guys are just saying, oh, well, the horizon looks flat, but that means it's a globe. It just shows that you haven't studied this, and you guys are a couple of frickin' shills. God, I can't believe I ever referred anyone to this guy. And that's so true for me as well. Finding rock-solid evidence for the uh, flat Earth is just not working for me either. What about the stationary Earth? Didn't look into that. And uh, you claim to be a, a Bible-believing Christian. Uh, says it right in there that the Earth is fixed and immovable, which is a big part of this, but apparently you missed all that too. 
Now you can find a link to his channel below. Uh, it'll be in the description box below. And there's a good number of people that are coming out now and just debunking all of these reasons for the flat earth. I've probably shown, I don't know, less than 10 debunks in these uh, videos that I'm posting at the moment. But I've seen all 200 reasons that Eric Dubay posted. Every single flat earth reason has now been satisfactorily debunked. Again, what about the stationary Earth reasons? I don't know if you realize this, Tiger Dan, but if the Earth was a spinning globe, it would have to be spinning, it would, and it would have to be orbiting around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour, and the sun would have to be orbiting the magnetic center at nearly a half a million miles an hour, I'm sorry, the galactic center, at nearly half a million miles an hour, and the galaxy should be hauling ass through space over a million miles an hour. So, did you debunk that? Have you found evidence for all this motion that you apparently believe exists? Have you debunked uh, the fact that, you know, there is no spinning, and we can prove that? And, you know, there really is no curvature, and that's provable. Now, you can't say, oh, I can see the horizon and, I, and it looks flat. That's not proof. But if you go up in a weather balloon 20 miles and there's still no curvature and, and the horizon doesn't drop, then, you know, that's pretty good evidence that not only is it stationary, but it is, it is also flat. So, wow, man. Wow. In my mind. And uh, it's, it's up to you to look at the evidence. We're being played for fools. The, it's, uh, the whole flat earth movement is a psychological operation to con you and it's psychological warfare that's what's going on no the flat earth movement is not psychological warfare the flat earth movement is the truth what you're doing is uh, psychological warfare you're an agent provocateur um, you're controlled opposition and you know I never never really thought I would have said this about you um, I sort of thought this about Eric Dubay when he came out with all of his, uh, you know, Hail Hitler stuff. But, you know, I, n I never really thought I would have seen this from you because you claim to be a Christian. And typically Christians will approach one another and talk to one another about their differences in opinion before labeling false accusations. One of the Ten Commandments is to not bear false witness. And unfortunately, you know, I, I guess you're probably not a Christian. You just pretend to be one on TV so that you could sort of, you know, glean sympathy of uh, uh, people who are Christians and happen to believe you. So shame on you, man. That's a very terrible thing to do. Um, I didn't unsubscribe to you when you made all these original videos. I thought it was great that you were finally questioning things after all this time. But, you know, it seems like what you did was is you just sort of blindly followed the Flat Earth Movement without understanding it. You still don't understand it. And now you're exposing yourself. Um, you're not exposing me. You know, shame on you, man. Shame on you. And uh, you'll never get to the bottom of it. They'll have you chasing round in circles. For, for they'll, You'll spend years of your life just uh, looking at this kind of stuff. And you'll be chasing your tail and not getting anywhere in life. <laughs> it's so funny because uh, you've been a flat earther for all these months. And now that you're finally researching things, you think that uh, people are chasing their tail. Um this is the most ridiculous video I've ever seen you make because it clearly shows that either you're just really, really below any sort of level of intelligence or, t to me, it proves that you're actually controlled opposition. You're a shill, and, and I never thought I would have said this, but when I get done uploading this, I'm definitely unsubscribing to you at this point. Um, and I'm also going to remove your cards from my videos, and um, I'll probably make some debunking Tiger Dan videos for the next couple of months because a lot of your proofs were crap anyway. So just saying. So you got to wake up. You got to wake up fast. You got to realize who the players are who are playing you for fools. They're paid agents. Oh, I realize exactly who that is. I've I've never been paid one single dime for anything I've done. None of the shows I've done. Um, I'm not on any sort of payroll uh, for this. I'm doing this because it's the truth, and I have a moral imperative as a Christian to spread the truth and to help people understand that this is actually the truth. Some of these people are just scamming you out of money and out of uh, all sorts of things. Don't sign this Antarctic Petition Treaty. You're just going to find yourself inconvenienced in the future. Don't sign a petition because you might be inconvenienced. 
Do you even understand what a petition is, Mr. Dan, if that is your real name? Uh, a petition is to get uh, lots and lots of people behind an idea or behind a goal. And when you have a certain number of people that are signed off behind a goal, um, you can take that position, uh, that petition, and uh, take the goal to new levels. Um, so inconvenience, well, an inconvenience is having to make responses to videos of people whom I thought were my friends and associates and colleagues. Um, this is an inconvenience. Signing a petition is not an inconvenience. People have been signing petitions, you know, for as long as America's been around at least. Um, when there's tyranny in the government and there's things going on that we don't want to happen as a people, because the power is with the people, at least here in America, I don't know about where you live, um, but when we people get together, one of the good ways to show our support and allegiance and to really, you know, make an impact on the reality is through petitions. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with signing a petition. I don't see what you, you must be very paranoid or you're just trying to discredit me, which is, you know, again, shame on you. Because what they're doing, it's a, it's a collect, they're collecting data on people. And uh, if you've signed this Antarctic Treaty position, uh, petition, that's going to have no benefits to you whatsoever to sign it. You're not going to benefit in any way whatsoever by signing that treaty uh, petition. And what's going to happen is it's going to get handed over and your name is going to get put down on a list. Wait, what? So by, by signing a petition, your name's going to get handed over and you're going to put, get put down on a list. Now, first of all, you can sign the petition anonymously. You don't have to put your name or any information on there, although you can. I put mine right on the forefront. And um, so, Tiger Dan, you think it's a good society that we live in that if free people who have a right to petition their government, um, you think that's a, a good thing to, to consider that if you sign this petition, you might be put on a list? So what, you're just going to uh, subscribe to the New World Order? I, I guess you're probably going to go for the chip in your forehead or in your right hand because, well, you don't want to be put on that list. Do you have any idea what uh, revolution means? Do you have any idea what power with the people means? Or you're just sort of muddying the water with lies and nonsense? Man, shame on you. And uh, in the future, it might be six months from now, it could be two years from now, and you'll be um, booking a flight somewhere, you'll turn up to the airport looking forward to your holiday, and you'll be refused a flight, because that's the consequences of being foolish in this uh, Flat Earth community. You're such a coward. You really are a coward. So you're afraid to sign a petition because you might be put on a no-fly list? Did you know that you can get put on a no-fly list for growing your own vegetables and drinking raw milk? Yeah, that, that's considered a domestic terrorist here in America. So we're just supposed to conform with the New World Order because it, you're sort of afraid of what might happen to you? Um, do you think that the uh, revolutionaries were afraid what might happen to them? Or do you think that they held fast to their beliefs or held fast to their convictions? That's what this is about. This isn't about fear of repercussions. This is about making a change in the world. And yeah, if 100,000 people do sign this petition, we can do something with that. And um, I, I submit that the reason why you're coming out against me on this petition is because you're paranoid, you're afraid, and you actually don't want to see what's in the Antarctic because it might prove your whole little, <laughs> your whole little video series wrong. Um, I'm just curious to see what's out there, and there's a lot of people out there who are also curious, and this is one good way to, to get some momentum behind it. The whole reason why Eric Dubay's website was banning people, and uh, I, I got literally hundreds of messages from people telling me that they'd been banned from the IFAS International Flat Earth Research Society website. And uh, some of these people, they never even uh, commented. They just signed up, gave over their details, and then suddenly they found themselves banned from it. And they were wondering why, what's going on? Well, it's obvious why. It's a data collection service. Oh, it's obvious? Do you have any proof for that? Or you're just making wild allegations without any sort of evidence to back your claims? Unsubstantiated claims are worth nothing. Um, if you don't have anything to support your claim or your accusations, then basically all you're doing is slander.
And by the way, I was banned from IFERS uh, about a week after I joined up for no reason. Now, does that mean they're collecting data on me? I didn't give them any of my personal information. What are you talking about? Man, you are paranoid. You are a shill. You are a controlled opposition. And yes, this is definitely psychological warfare, but from you, not from us. We're just uh, proponents for the truth. I've proved the Earth is a flat, stationary plane so many different ways that you're not going to touch because you can't argue with it. You can't debunk the truth, Tiger Dan. They, as soon as they've got your details, your email address, and they can connect that to your name or whatever, then they just get rid of you. You'd be useless on that website. They don't want you on there. They just want to get your name because they can, in the future, stitch you up. And you'll get stitched up because you'll be put on a list and you'll be inconvenienced at a later date in the future. Do you have a Facebook account, Tiger Dan? Do you have a YouTube account, Tiger Dan? Uh, I'm pretty sure you do, at least a YouTube account. So, you know, signing up for something online is always risky. You know, there, there are nefarious people out there that want to do things with your information, but to just accuse people of that without any evidence to support it because you're paranoid or you're controlled opposition, um, th this is just total slander. Um, you haven't disproven anything. I've done over a hundred videos proving in all sorts of different ways that the Earth is actually stationary and it's a plane, not just from looking at the horizon, like that's what you guys did apparently. Um, we live in an information age where really nothing is private, but to say that by signing up for IFERS or for signing a petition you're putting yourself on a no-fly list, okay, well Come to America, grow your own vegetables, get off the grid in terms of, uh, you know, electricity. So have your own generators, have solar panels and get off the grid. And they consider you a domestic terrorist. So I guess we all just have to conform to the new world order and to be safe and sound like Tiger Dan wants to be. And uh, the same thing is true with this Antarctic Treaty p uh, petition that the Morgyle is uh, organizing. Uh, He's, he's running a scam here. Let's face it, it's a scam. You're not going to benefit from it. A petition is a scam? A petition is a scam. Here's the definition of petition. A formal written request, typically one signed by many people, appealing to authority with respect to a particular cause. Or verb, make, pres make or present a formal request to an authority with respect to a particular cause. So that's a scam? So people banding together for a common purpose is a scam? Man, what planet do you live on? I just can't believe the idiocy that I'm witnessing here. And, you know, I, I used to think of you as a colleague and as, as sort of a friend. And now I just think of you as this paranoid shill. So I, I'm sure we're going to see more like you come out. Um, and in one of your videos, you referenced Tim Osman, who's uh, a known troll. He's got 50 different YouTube accounts, and he just trolls and, and shills Flat Earth uh, pages and Flat Earth videos 24 hours a day. Um, so, so a petition is a scam, but being a turncoat and an idiot and trying to convince people that I'm setting them up for something, that's slander, and that's a scam. You're a, you're a fucking scam. You're just going to end up getting put on a list. I love your little quote there at the top, Morgyle begs for money. Uh, just so you know, after I did the Art Bell show debating Dr. Josh Grinley, um, I tried to keep myself anonymous, but it didn't work. And right after that, I lost all my high-profile business clients. I had a home-based business that did very well for many years, and uh, one of my biggest clients was a medical device manufacturer, and I did very well for myself. And after coming out as a flat earther, I lost that contract uh, within about two months for no reason. And um, so, you know, you call me begging for money. I I've dedicated my life to this movement because I know that it's the truth. I've proven it's the truth. And uh, people in the community have actually asked me, how can I support your channel? So I set up channels for them to do so. And uh, people that want to help can help, and I really appreciate it. By the way, my wife is uh, dying of a fatal disease. And so, you know, it's very difficult for me to be able to leave the house and take care of her at the same time.
And since I really enjoy, you know, making videos about this because I know it's the truth and I've helped a lot of people to come to understanding that this is the truth, um, you know, if I can be compensated for that monetarily, that's great. Um, I never force anyone to contribute to my efforts, but people who like to certainly can. Um, you know, if you don't understand that, if you don't understand the fact that I can't work a full-time job and do uh, flat earth full-time and take care of my wife while I'm totally broke with, with no work, obviously you're independently wealthy. You probably get big fat checks from the government, especially now that you're sort of uh, flip-flopping and did a 180 on your whole little epiphany for the last seven months. It really just goes to show how you never really understood this to begin with or that you were sort of implanted into this movement in order to discredit people at a later date, which you're doing sort of a piss poor job, I must say. And uh, you all know that the more guile, he's always posting videos, e-begging for money. It's humiliating. He wants to go out and get a job. You should probably learn a little humility, Tiger Dan. Um, if that's humiliating to you, um, you're humiliating to me. Begging for money? I've never begged anyone for money. I've set up channels for people who want to contribute to my efforts to do so. People have asked for it. Um, did I ever beg you for money? Um, you can ask anybody that has supported my channel whether I begged for it. No, I set up the channel for them to support my channel or, you know, set up the avenue for them to support my channel. And, and some people do. Some people don't. But beg? You know, you're a liar. Did you know that um, that's against the Ten Commandments? Bearing false witness? Accusing me of things that are totally unfounded? Where's your evidence? Begging for money. Wow. You know, you're, you're begging for an ass whooping. Come to South Carolina, I'll tell you that. Uh, rather than lying all the time about having all this proof for the flat earth that doesn't exist because nobody's ever found it. Okay then debunk all of my flat earth proofs. I've got tons of them. I have over 100 videos covering probably 50 proofs that aren't even mentioned in Eric Dubay's 200. Um, so instead of debunking the truth or arguing against the proofs, you're just going to make claims. Um, have you ever heard of science? Have you ever heard of debate? You can't just make unsubstantiated claims. You can't just slander without uh, you know, having some sort of evidence to back it up. Uh, slander is only slander when you just go saying things uh, negative about people without any you know evidence to support your position so lying and slandering you're not a Christian you're not you couldn't be Christians wouldn't act like that you're a pseudo Christian you're a crypto Zionist or you're just a you know proud card carrying member of the Flat Earth Society who was put into this position in order to you know, discredit the movement, and you know, I think it's a real shame. I really do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sad to see you go, man. And uh, but see, the thing is, because he's so poverty stricken, when he does gather a thousand email addresses, that becomes a commodity. And uh, because he's always e begging for money, uh, he will most likely sell those email addresses on to the highest bidder. And a big business, they'll pay a lot of money out for a thousand email addresses. Really? And do you have any evidence to support that? First of all, I would never do that. What an awful thing to say. Where are you getting this? So, I mean, usually when somebody is paranoid because they think somebody's going to sell their information, it means that you're probably guilty of something similar. I'm not saying that's the case, but just to all y'all out there, Anything, anything that you send me in terms of emails, um, again, you can sign the Antarctic peti uh, petition anonymously. I don't have access to anyone's names or email addresses that sign up for that. I don't think I do. Maybe there's a way to do it, but I was never even interested in that. Um, I would never sell people's information. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, I just can't believe you'd come out and make these false accusations. This is slander. Um, you've got your head stuffed so far up your ass, Tiger Dan. Um, you know, that little lump in your throat is your nose. And you'll probably end up just getting every porn outlet sending you emails regarding their services. That's one likely outcome. 
Ask any of my subscribers, ask any people that have emailed me, have they ever gotten spam porn outlets? And no, because, I, you know, I, I take people's privacy very seriously. Um, I'll go on the record here and swear to God that I would never do anything of the sort. You know, th this is just so terrible of you to say, man. Um, this, this shows me that you're not a Christian, you're not a researcher, you just go blindly splurting out things that you think make sense or you think will hurt me. You're not hurting my feelings, you're not going to hurt the movement, you're not going to hurt anything. All you're doing is basically showing how fickle you are, how wishy-washy you are, and, and how, you know, I could see you doing this sort of thing because you came up with the idea and you're accusing me of possibly doing it. Wow, what a load of shit, man. You're full of it. The other outcome is that he's got every intention of handing over this uh, petition over to the Homeland Security. I have every intention of handing this over to Homeland Security? What are you talking about? Dude, you know, you're just a liar. You're a blatant liar. Um, I would never do that. I would never sell anyone's information. E everything that I get in terms of emails and stuff from people is private. Um, I don't. I don't even typically share that, you know, with my wife. And to hand it over to Homeland Security, um, you know, I, I've been exposing PNAC, 9/11, and you know this whole uh, orchestration of Homeland Security and the Patriot Act. I'm totally against all that stuff. I have nothing to do with that. In fact, um, I think Homeland Security needs to go just along with the Federal Reserve and the CIA. So for you to accuse me of this, man, you know, really, the, the, uh, without cussing you out, just shame on you. Shame on you. You're not a Christian. You are the opposite of a Christian. You are a liar. You are misleading people. You haven't debunked anything. You're just making claims about me because I set up fan funding pages for, for my YouTube channel. Lots of people do that. Um, and, you know, I've worked lots of jobs in my life. I've had lots of different kinds of jobs. But like I said before, my wife is terminally ill, and so I'm staying home with her and taking care of her. Um, she may only have a couple of years left, and, and if I'm able to, to keep going, uh, making flat earth videos, exposing the truth, showing people how this works, showing people how the world couldn't possibly be a spinning globe, um, and you know, if I'm able to be compensated for that, then that's great, because I don't know about you, but I have to pay my bills in order to live in a house and have electricity and internet, but I guess you get your big fat checks from the flat earth society, right? Where is your logic? So if there's nothing to the Antarctic Treaty, let's just, you know, take it at face value and say that it's a way to keep corporations out of the pristine penguin land, why would that be such a big deal to them? The only reason it would be a big deal to them is if they're actually hiding something in Antarctica. So y your claim is just totally fallacious. Um, y you lack all logic and common sense. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty was set up to keep people and corporations from really getting a good understanding of what is in the far southern regions. Now us as a free people, we're not owned by the government. We own the government. They're our servants. And so if we petition enough people, uh, technically they have to follow suit. And for you to say that uh, they're going to use the Antarctic petition to round up people, then what does that say? It proves that there's something up with the Antarctic and the Antarctic Treaty. So you, you just you don't you don't have any common sense, or you're just playing this role because that's what you're paid to do. Um, I don't know what you do for a living, but it appears that you are an agent provocateur shill, and I'm just wondering how well does that pay? It must pay pretty good because uh, you're just sitting there spouting off insults and accusations, false accusations at me. Um, because of a petition? Because I beg for money online? Man, I just can't believe this. I can't believe how, how retarded your whole position is. And let alone, uh, we're pretty far into this thing now, and uh, I haven't heard you dis refute even one bit of the evidence that I've been pointing to for the last seven months. 
has nothing to do with curvature. Most of it, it has to do with the lack of motion. Now, there obviously is no curvature, which we already showed earlier, even from 20 miles into the air from a weather balloon. So, you know, Tiger Dan, you can believe you live on a, on a frickin' donut, for all I care. You can believe you live on a spinning globe. You can believe that you live, you know, lodged in your own ass. That's fine. But I want to know the truth, and I want to help other people understand the truth. Um, this greatest of all deceptions is now being revealed, and the Good Shepherd will separate the wheat from the chaff. And unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not looking very good for you, Mr. Tiger. And the first thing that the Homeland Security are going to do is say, ah, oh, these are the troublemakers that want to uh, end this Antarctic Treaty, so get them put on a, another list. Troublemakers? So our right to petition, our right to rally, our right to protest makes us troublemakers. Well, you know what, Tiger Dan, maybe you should go move to China because there's no petitions, there's no rallying, there's no protesting, and I think you'd fit in very well there. And if you try to jump off of the building from your sweatshop, they'll catch you in a net, so you can't even kill yourself there. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you're, you're not making any sense. You haven't debunked anything. All you're doing is just basically slinging accusations at me, slandering me, uh, causing people to question signing a petition because they might get in trouble with the government. Um, what's the point of, of a petition? What's the point of disagreeing with authority? Um, we live in a very corrupt society, and I, and I pride myself that I have integrity enough to respect people's privacy, to give people the benefit of the doubt, I even apologized to you in my last video because, you know, you called all flat earthers liars who use the AE projection. And, um, you know, I'm going to retract that apology. I now realize full well that you're a total shill. And anyone that doesn't see that must be blind. So, you know, you can go on living on the ball earth, move to China where they don't have petitions. But here in America, we have a right for that. And I'm going to exercise that right. And, you know, patriots aren't afraid of the government or no-fly lists. Patriots are more concerned with the truth and keeping the power with the people. And you, my friend, are more concerned with just discrediting people because that's your job. Get them put on a no-fly list because uh, they're troublemakers. Let's be honest here. Let's be uh, truthful about stuff. If you're gullible enough to fall and suggestible enough to fall for the lies that have been put forward to support a flat earth then you're gullible enough to be put on that you're not sound you're not of sound mind you deserve to be put on a list so you just basically called yourself gullible because you've been a flat earther for all this time okay so if you're gullible then why are we even listening to you now um i'm not gullible uh you apparently are because you think we live on a spinning globe still after seeing all this evidence or maybe just ignoring all the evidence but there's plenty of evidence to prove the earth is flat and stationary that doesn't involve looking at the horizon so you think people that sign a petition deserve to be put on a list so I guess that means you're working for the government and you probably got 666 tattooed on your the back of your rear and you probably got your micro trip planned in a couple of days huh Let's be honest here. Let's be uh, truthful about stuff. If you're gullible enough to fall and suggestible enough to fall for the lies that have been put forward to support a flat earth, then you're gullible enough to be put on... You're not, sound, you're not of sound mind. Would you please grace us with one example where I've mixed lies with truth, mixed lies with hypocrisy? Um, I haven't heard one example. You're just making claims. So not only are you a poor researcher, but you also don't understand how to prove things. And um, obviously you're not a Christian because Christians wouldn't make false accusations against anyone. And, um, you know, it, it's a real shame to, to see people that are obviously controlled opposition calling me a liar with no proof. 
and to call people gullible because they understand the truth um you're a terrible person and i'm telling you what you're doing is going to come back to you tenfold yes they mix truth in there with lies uh yes they mix hypocrisy with lies and a little bit of truth in there just to grab your attention but if you're not paying attention to what's going on that the total structure of things the total overview and you're not seeing the game that's being played it's a game uh, psychological warfare it's a game of uh, chess it's a three-dimensional chess game these players have been put in position to uh, not only dupe but you've only got to look at some of these people they're hypocrites yeah i agree people have been put into positions to do this people like yourself um, I'm a I'm a single person here that finally realized the truth after a lifetime of lies and I felt it a moral imperative to share this truth and prove this every way I can for the rest of my life and um, you know for you to for you to say that it doesn't hurt my feelings it, it is just sort of a letdown because it's people like yourself that cause all this confusion and division with unsubstantiated claims and basically your personal experience as a paid shill uh, leads you to believe that everybody sort of does this, but no, not everybody does this. Not everybody is a paid shill like you are, Tiger Dan. I'm just a regular person. Um, I've got lots of friends who've known me my whole life who would tell you that, um, you know, I, I would never do anything like that. I would never sell someone's information. I would never um, mix truths with lies. Um, if I've ever made a mistake and realized it, I've corrected it. Um, but but to say that the fact that we make mistakes and correct them makes us gullible or makes us liars, um, I'm really not following your logic, Tiger Dan, but then again, you, you don't have any sort of logic. You're just playing a role. <sighs> they come out acting all shocked that um, somebody might post a Flat Earth Deception video. It's shocking that he would put the word... Flat Earth and Liars in the title of the video. Absolutely outrageous. Never said shocking. Never said outrageous. What I said was, what the fuck? Because Tiger Dan, Flat Earther, calls all Flat Earthers liars. Now that shows right there that you're something wrong with your brain there. Maybe you're a schizophrenic. I don't know. That's just a hypothesis. I'm not saying that's the truth. Either you're a schizophrenic, you're a paid opposition, or you're just really too daft to understand the proof. And again, here we are towards the end of this thing, and you still haven't debunked even one single piece of evidence. Nothing. Um, have you shown the Earth spins? Have you shown the Earth has curvature? No, you're just making claims. So um, I'm really not following this other than this is just sort of a hit piece against me, a hit piece against the movement, which I guess that was your entire function from the beginning. Um, I guess the powers that be got sort of uncomfortable when they saw this sort of thing coming out into the mainstream. And so they, uh, you know, put their pawns in place to sort of, uh, you know, mix in with the, uh, with the truth movement. And then there you go, just blowing up all sorts of lies and nonsense like it was uh, liaria. Liaria is when you just can't stop spewing shit out of your mouth. And then what do they do next? They go on a talk show and they start calling everybody who disagrees with them a shill. I've never done that. I've never gone on a talk show and called everyone who disagrees with me a shill. Um, actually, I, I invite uh, discourse. I invite debate. I invite conversation. And people that disagree with me tend to ultimately end up agreeing with me because the, the world is obviously flat and stationary. I've proved it so many ways. And um, never have I called anyone a shill because they disagree with me. Um, who I will call a shill are people who spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week, like your best friend Tim Osman, uh, you know, posting nonsense on flat earth forums or even busting into the talk I had with Jeff Stewart and GeoShifter the other day. He had a stripper. So I guess you and Tim Osman get together and go have uh, stripper parties? Well, that's not very Christian of you, Tiger Dan 925 it's, it's, it's hypocrisy. These people are hypocrites. They're liars. They're duping you, and you need to realize it. But it's up to you. Yeah, these people are liars. These people are definitely liars. And by these people, I mean Tiger Dan.
and they don't care about the truth. They just want to twist information and stitch you up and laugh at you behind your back. Don't care about the truth? Do you really think I would have stuck my neck out on the line and started making flat earth videos if I didn't know for sure that it was the truth? No, the people I laugh at are the people who believe we live on a spinning globe even when confronted with all of the evidence. Now I could go into hours and hours of all this evidence, but just watch my videos. Um, I've made tons of videos proving conclusively that the world isn't spinning, it's not a globe, and the sun actually you know, rotates along the face of the earth concentric with the North Pole, just like it says in Genesis. I don't know if you've ever read that book. It's, it's part of this book called the Bible. Are you familiar? I guess not. So are you calling the Bible a lie? Huh. That's what's going on. Now, I welcome all criticism on this channel because I know that my information stands up and holds up to scrutiny. Your information stands up and holds up to scrutiny. Okay, so scrutiny means provide evidence and then allow people to scrutinize it and test it. So far, all you've done is make unsubstantiated claims, and uh, unsubstantiated claims don't hold up to scrutiny. Um, I don't have to prove anything to you. Because the maps don't work doesn't mean we live on a globe. Ask a cartographer. Any cartographer will tell you. If you ask them, uh, do we have any accurate maps that represent accurately the face of the Earth? And they'll tell you no. Well, what about the Mercator projection? No, that's not an accurate representation of the face of the Earth. It's a cylindrical conformal map. Well, what about the globe? Is that an accurate representation of the face of the Earth? Ask a cartographer and they'll tell you, no, there's problems with it because it looks just like the Mercator projection. So, you know, for you to say that your, your claims hold up to scrutiny is, is just sort of uh, very self-righteous of you, but unfounded, unsubstantiated, and uh, so far, because I know myself personally, you're just a liar. You're just spewing out lies because um, you have an agenda. I don't have any agenda other than disseminating the truth. And if people want to support my channel, that's great. I appreciate it, and it helps me to continue along with this path of truth. Um, but for you to, to make all these claims and, and, and just basically slander me is not going to hold up to scrutiny. Period. So I don't fear anybody criticizing me and it ought to be obvious that anybody who stands up and tells the truth out there is going to get hundreds and hundreds of dislikes on their videos that's because you're not telling the truth you're lying um, your lack of understanding of the proofs of the flat earth doesn't prove anything it just proves you're not that smart uh, the fact that you went along with something that you didn't understand and then debunked yourself because you still don't understand it only proves that you're a poor researcher, you're a liar, you're controlled opposition, and I, I hope you get a really nice paycheck from the Flat Earth Society for making this video about me. I'm Tiger Dan, this is part six. In part set, no it's not, this is part five. Which is it, Tiger Dan? Is it six? Is it five? Is it five and a half? Is it six and a half? You don't even know what part your own video is. Ugh. Yeah, really, really on the ball there, buddy. Um, part six is coming up next, but in part seven, I'm going to cover the Bible because I did post a video about um, 75 Bible verses that prove a flat earth. And uh, I'm going to cover that in part seven. So if you don't believe the Bible, you can skip that part. The Bible doesn't prove the flat earth. The Bible was written in a context when everyone knew the earth was flat. And for a lot of people, it is a very deep affirmation of this truth because um, the flat earth is actually aligned with the Bible. Um, but so now you're going to go debunk yourself again about the Bible. That's why I stay away from biblical arguments because you, you can't take an ancient book to prove the flat earth. You have to use experiments. Um, so, you know, I think you have a hard, hard time understanding what is proof. You have a hard time understanding what is fiction. You have a hard time understanding what are your delusions. And you have a hard time understanding what are things like a petition, which is intended to get uh, the power of the people behind an idea. So, uh, you know, if, if people are afraid of what might happen because they get behind an idea, then we never would have had the country of America. 
we never would have had uh, things like this whole flat earth movement because, oh my God, people are going to think I'm stupid if I come out with this. And now people think that you're very stupid because you can't make your mind up from one month to the next. So, <sighs> lost all credibility in Tiger Dan, and it is a shame.